I've been reading a bit about the solar controller here, and I found something pretty interesting. For some reason, Airstream decided to wire the solar controller backwards from how the manual specifies it should be wired. The manual specifies that the solar controller should be wired so that battery one will power the house battery and battery two will power the chassis battery. Uh, for some reason, Airstream decided to reverse that. What I've seen in practice is that means that uh, the solar controller basically spends all of its time just charging the chassis battery and it never charges the house battery at all. Which kind of defeats the purpose. And I really don't think the chassis battery needs to be charged that much. It seems to be putting a lot of power into it um, and I don't think that's actually very good for the battery either. So I'd like to try and reverse the two. Uh, after reading the manual, um, it gives detailed description of exactly how it should be set up for the house battery. And the main thing I need to do first is to change the battery type for battery one and battery two. Because you have to make sure your battery type is set according to uh, what battery type it is so it knows how to charge it correctly. This particular solar controller uh, comes with a external panel that you would normally set that on and it plugs in right here but they didn't include that panel with this unit but what they did is it is controlled uh, via the Firefly unit and there's a secret menu that allows you to change those settings so I'll show you that now. Here we are at the Firefly control unit and our dealer showed that there's actually a secret menu um, if we take a look at the standard menu, what you can see here is if I go to the solar, taking a look at what's happening, um, battery one is the chassis battery, the way they've got it wired, and battery two is the house battery. And you can see right now it's charging, bulk charging, the chassis battery completely unnecessarily. Like the chassis battery, we just ran the van, it's already at full. There is no reason for it to be pouring power especially at bulk mode into the chassis battery. And if I look at battery two, so it's updating, you can see it is not currently charging it. And that's actually fine because the house battery is actually full right now too. So let's go to the secret menu here. If you go to the settings page and you press and hold on the model Dodge range line for several seconds, it will bring up the secret settings menu. You should be very careful doing anything with this settings menu here. Um, it can cause serious damage, so don't change anything if you don't know exactly what it does. Let's go over to the solar power options. So if I go to the solar power settings, here on this page you can see the battery types. There's various pages here uh, for battery one and battery two. So looking at the page for battery one, you can see it's a uh, battery type AGM of uh, 96 amp hour. And battery two is a lithium battery of 270 amp hour. So that's the house battery versus the chassis battery. And on these pages, um, you can find the various settings that it needs to know about for how to charge the battery. If we're going to swap battery one and battery two, we need to make sure that the settings are appropriate. At first, I was just going to go ahead and record what the settings were and then just swap the two. But reading the manual for both the solar controller and for the battery itself, what I found is the settings that Airstream has put in for the house lithium battery aren't accurate. The uh, absorption voltage and the float voltage are set to be the same thing, which they shouldn't be, and both of them are substantially different than what the manual says. Uh, in addition, if I look at the cutoff voltage limit, it's set to 16, which is just really high. There is no way the lithium battery should ever get that high. So instead of just swapping the two, what I'm going to do is actually set them according to the manual specifications for the battery and the solar charge unit. Before changing anything on this, of course, you want to make sure the entire system is powered off and the power is completely disconnected. 
there are some fairly high voltages and amperages potentially going on here in the wiring and you do not want to play with that. So follow good safety and always make sure everything is powered off and completely disconnected before switching any wires. Taking a look at the input wiring here, uh, what you can see is these two wires here are the input from the solar panel. These two wires here are the input to battery one. And these two wires here are the input in battery two. So we basically just want to swap this set for this set. Another interesting thing I found is that uh, piled on top of here was a temperature sensor. <laughs> Reading the manual for the solar controller, this temperature sensor is supposed to be next to the battery to measure the battery temperature. And it was just kind of crammed up there on top of the solar controller. So I'm probably going to go ahead and move this temperature sensor over to the battery as well, where it should be. Here is the rewired configuration of the solar controller. You can see that the uh, blue cable, which goes to the house battery, is now in battery position number one. And the red cable which goes to the chassis battery is now in position number two and i've updated the firefly unit to the correct settings for the battery interestingly if you set the firefly unit to the lithium type it has the wrong settings so i had to use a custom type to get the settings that the uh, both the battery manufacturer and the solar uh, controller manufacturer recommended Here we have the Firefly controller on the solar panel page. You can see right now it's not charging battery number one, uh, the house battery, because it's already full. It's decided it really wants to charge battery number two, which is the chassis battery. Uh, but there's not much sun out, so it's really not charging either one very much. <laughs> one thing to be aware of with the Firefly unit is it does have presets for all of the system components and the presets they have stored assume the battery types for battery one is the chassis battery and battery two is the house battery so if you do swap it uh, be aware that if you go into the settings menu and restore defaults it will swap them back to what it thinks they should be i haven't found a way to change that yet well i left it running for a day with the solar panel on and the house battery has gone from 87% to 98%. So it seems to be working. I suspect with the configuration Airstream had, it was basically just over voltage in the chassis battery all the time. And that's not good for it. And you can see it actually does charge the house battery. Even with all the systems on, you can see it does ch charge the house battery up over the course of the day. And that's with relatively little sun here in Seattle. Um, so I definitely think this is the way it should be wired. You can also see here on the uh, power statistics that today, with the new wiring, it generated 66 amp hours. Compare that to what I was getting on previous days. On average, I would think maybe 14 amp hours. So basically it was just wasting all the power it was generating with the previous configuration. It's actually using it now. I've been running a bit of an experiment here. What I did is I let the solar panel charge up the house battery to 100% this morning and then I switched on the refrigerator and I just left it to see if the refrigerator would draw down more power than the solar panel was generating. And so far uh, it seems like the solar panel is able to easily generate enough power to completely power the refrigerator and keep the battery at 100%. If I check, you can see here that the solar panels have been generating from 60 to 70 kilowatt, sorry, 60 to 70 amp hours per day. Previously, before I swapped those inputs, it was more like 14 amp hours per day. So this configuration is much better. Um, sun's starting to go down, so you can see the total production has dropped off. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the refrigerator on and the battery connected and everything overnight that's going to draw down the house battery and then tomorrow we'll see if the solar charge is enough to continue to power the refrigerator and charge back the battery a bit. Looks like I picked kind of a bad day for the experiment because uh, yesterday it started raining and so obviously I didn't generate very much solar power all day. 
So this is kind of day two of the experiment. Uh, battery is currently 51%. Been running the refrigerator. You can see that uh, instead of generating 60 amp hours, it generated 20, so about a third of what it normally does with a nice sunny day. So the battery has obviously dropped quite a bit. Uh, we'll see if the weather improves today and how it does with the battery charge. We had another relatively cloudy day. Uh, I'd say about half clouds. And you can see the uh, battery level dropped from 51 in the morning to 48. And the solar controller says it generated a pretty decent 47 amp hours. So that's basically break even. 47 amp hours seems to be about what the refrigerator in the van uses in a given day. So if it can keep up with that, um, it should be okay. And you can see on a good sunny day, I'll generate 60 plus. So that pretty much tells me the single solar panel, as long as you're getting decent sun, uh, can definitely keep the refrigerator going and charge the battery a little bit during the day. The question is whether that's enough to keep it up with what it loses overnight. So, really need to get a good sunny day and see if the net battery charge goes up from what it was in the morning. Running my experiment over another few days, what I found is basically the single solar panel isn't quite enough to both keep the refrigerator running and keep the battery charge. What I see is that on a nice sunny day with the single solar panel, at least where I'm at in Washington, parked with a lot of shade, a nice sunny day will generate somewhere between 60 and 70 amp hours. More average days, somewhere maybe like, you know, partly cloudy, or 40 amp hours. And that just isn't enough. Uh, what I see with the refrigerator running is uh, you'll lose about 20% of your battery overnight, and so it needs to both recover that 20% during the day and a little more to cover other operating costs, and it just can't do that. Now, more solar exposure would certainly help. Um, my panels, at best, I've seen them only generating 140 watts when they're rated for 200, so probably a better sun angle, uh, less shade would help as well. But uh, still probably not going to be able to run your refrigerator with just a single panel.